This is Fomalhaut, the Eye of Sauron's star as seen by the Hubble Space Telescope. When JWST took its turn looking at the same star, it saw a lot more. Although it does look a lot less like the Dark Lord. We're seeing rings around a nearby star, and possibly even planets hiding in a system that's larger and more complex than our own asteroid and Kuiper belts. This is the first asteroid belt ever seen outside our own solar system, and now we know a lot more about it. It turns out that the star known as Fomalhaut has three nested belts that extend out over 23 billion kilometers from the star itself. That's 150 times larger than the Earth-Sun distance. And the largest outermost belt is about twice as large as the Kuiper belt around the Sun. Part of this larger belt is what we can see in older images by Hubble and the ALMA telescope array, including the Sauron-esque image. Here we can see a comparison between the Hubble, ALMA and JWST pictures. ALMA is in red and Hubble in blue, while JWST is the yellowy orange colour. The numbers here refer to the wavelengths of light that each telescope imaged the system in. 25.5 and 15.5 microns correspond to mid-infrared light for JWST. 0.6 microns is visible light for Hubble and 1.3 millimeters for ALMA, which is in the microwave range. Also, this is to scale, and I think it does a great job in showing how much more JWST is really seeing. The inner part of the large ring is visible in all of them. But one of the shocking things about JWST is the huge size of the ring that we're now able to see. Plus, it shows us two inner asteroid belts for the very first time. We're seeing the thermal glow of these belts in incredible detail, and we have never seen this before. Hubble and ALMA have been able to image Kuiper belt systems like this before, but we needed JWST to let us see closer to the stars, and start viewing these asteroid belt analogues too. We're now able to better study entire solar systems beyond our own in more detail than ever. And yes, there's almost certainly planets forming in there too. It's one of the places we've hypothesized about planets for ages, especially given the gaps in the rings that we saw in the older Hubble images, and we can see them in the new JWST data too. It's very likely that the gravitational influence of a planet is cleaning up the system and making those gaps. This would be similar to how Jupiter shaped the edge of the asteroid belt in our own solar system, how Neptune sculpted the inner edge of the Kuiper belt, and even how moons of Saturn create similar gaps in the rings of the planet. We haven't confirmed the existence of a planet or planets yet, but it's more good evidence that they might exist. And of course, more data and more time might allow us to confirm this one day. The object highlighted here in two different wavelengths of light is being called the Great Dust Cloud. Although in my opinion, you could call the whole system that too. But this feature might even be the resultant cloud left behind when two planets collided. It could also just be a big cloud that doesn't have such a violent past, similar to a suspected planet that Hubble saw but then failed to re-see on repeated attempts. Maybe both clouds are the result of icy bodies in the system smashing together, or maybe neither are. The fun and the frustration of astronomy is that we'll have to wait for more and more data on all of these questions. And maybe then we still won't know for sure. Just as a side note too, up here we can see that JWST also can't see what we previously suspected might be a planet in that Hubble image. So it probably really is gone. The star itself, Fomalhaut, is one of the brightest stars in the night sky, and it's actually easily visible with the naked eye. It's a hot star that's about 440 mega years old, which is probably about middle age for this type of star. And the rings we see are debris disks that are likely formed through collisions of larger objects, spraying dust and ice all around the star. I have a video talking all about the pre-JWST images and the physics of what might be going on here, so feel free to take a look at that if you need more Fomalhaut goodness once you finish this video. This image of the system is just the longest wavelength light. 25.5 microns, used to make the JWST image. At the center, that's not a coronagraph being used to block light. It's simply where the star and the system are so bright that it saturated the detectors and there's no usable data here. This next image then combines that data with the 23 micron data which is using a coronagraph. You can see that it's now a much neater cutout at the center and that's the coronagraph. There was also 15.5 micron light captured too, 
And here we can see each of these components separately and their different centers become pretty obvious. Again, we can combine all three of these wavelengths to get a full picture of the star and its belt system. To see the evolution of the Fomalhaut images over time, check out this cool gallery of some of the pictures we've taken over the years. And definitely let me know if you have a favorite in the comments below. The research team here has really given us a lot of amazing images to enjoy. And one extra cool thing they did was also provide deprojected images of the star too. This is what we would see if we were looking at the system face on, rather than at the angle we actually see it at. It's not essential for us to see this view, but I really like it. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.